And in the spirit of getting into it, I am thrilled to present our keynote speaker, Varda Meirotra from Semayu. Varda is an animal advocate and movement builder, exploring intersectional solutions. Most recently, she founded Semayu to undertake intersectional work and apply a systems approach for issues surrounding justice and animals. In this talk, Varda will explore how rigorous research can craft powerful alliances and elevate advocacy for animal welfare, public health, and environmental protection. Hi, my name is Varda Mehrotra, and it's a real pleasure to be here today. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time out to be a part of the symposium. Uh, thank you, Phonalytics, for organizing it. Um, today, I represent an organization called Samayu. Samayu works on food system reform in the context of animal agriculture, and uh, we do it with a intersectional, interconnected lens. And this is because we recognize that the problems that animal agriculture poses are not just limited to animals, but many other uh, interconnected uh, domains and issues are uh, a part of the food system challenges that we face. And food system challenges are complex problems. And we find several intersecting domains uh, relating to climate change, biodiversity loss, pollution, diseases, as we saw with COVID, and of course, bird flu, swine flu, uh, and, and also lifestyle diseases uh, that come from overconsumption of uh, animal products, nutrition, uh, food security, farmer issues. So the idea is really that given that uh, there are a complex set of problems. There are multiple issues and domains that make what are food systems in the context of animal agriculture. Such a complex problem will need a more holistic response. That's the basic premise, that a complex problem cannot realistically be responded to with a simplistic solution or with a siloed solution, uh, that we would really need to work upon these sort of problems in a way that are also interlinked. We, we can't just separate different uh, parts of this problem out and just, just try and work on that one part because we are talking about transforming and changing food systems, whether it be on the production side or the consumption side as, as a whole. And uh, when we started doing this work, we started reaching out to multiple kinds of organizations and stakeholders, so NGO partners, environmentalists, public health experts, uh, government officials, scientists, you know, all sorts of um, different uh, stakeholders who were connected to uh, the animal agriculture issue. And what we found was that we did not really have a common language. We did not have data. We did not have evidence that was in an Indian context that could highlight the linkages between what they were doing and what the what were the interests that they're representing and how animal agriculture was negatively impacting that. So one of the first things, uh, the, these are just some photos of uh, some of the dialogues that we did. So one of the first things that we did was to put together these three white papers. And this is, uh, these, these were really the bedrock of our dialogue, of our engagement that led to the action that we were able to undertake as, as a result of forming that network. And these white papers were absolutely critical because now we were able to take to uh, different stakeholders um, specific information in, in an Indian context on how animal agriculture was linking up with public health, the negative impact on farmer issues, and of course also on climate change. And this sort of data and research we find is absolutely critical in being able to, first of all, internally uh, be more precise with the kind of things that we can and cannot do. Uh, and also externally to, to be able to transform that into uh, dialogues, consensus, and then action. Um, and this is the, um, the activator process that we did for six months. We held a series of dialogues, one-to-one uh, -one dialogues, group dialogues. Uh, many of them were online. This was the final uh, in-person convening that we organized where we had so many different interests in the room all using data as our common language. Uh, and using that data, we, we were really able to help focus on the specific problems that we could all agree upon and think of specific solutions that uh, we could work towards. So we identified aquaculture, poultry, One Health, um, 
and also uh, uh, informing consumers about healthy uh, diets, plant-based diets, as the key areas that you know the convening felt. Uh, are areas where there are problems and there are also potentials for solutions and which is how we were able to kickstart our work um, for uh, working on the producer side and working on the consumption side. Within the producer side, uh, we turned our attention to Andhra Pradesh, which is a state in South India and it's a bustling center for aquaculture and poultry. And what we had uh, worked upon previously was uh, to get uh, consensus on how one health could be a lens that we could use to bring um, to, to bring change uh, in, in from a production standpoint uh, in in aquaculture and poultry. Um, so we went to Andhra Pradesh to understand uh, initially to do the you know initial evidence mapping uh, within the state uh, and to really look at the industry, its um, its challenges, the socio-economic concerns, and our research methodology. Uh, was again collaborative and multi-faceted here. Uh, so we partnered with local organizations that were uh, working with farmers in these uh, in, in different districts. And we uh, conducted a lot of focus group dis discussions, uh, surveys with farmers, uh, socioeconomic, understanding the socioeconomic considerations. And what we found in terms of the welfare conditions of uh, animals <clears throat> Uh, in terms of bird and fish is unfortunately what we find um, you know in, in in all animal farms that we visit or most animal farms that we visit uh, you know poor farm management uh, practices poor hygiene cramped conditions uh, high stocking density uh, extreme pollution in fact uh, you know vis-a-vis -vis pollution in the uh, the, the center of um, aquaculture in Andhra Pradesh in that specific district so there's there's all the uh, the fish farming that happens and these are all paddy farmers uh, farmers you know growing rice who have transitioned to uh, now fish farms and there there is a is a beautiful lake nearby called Kuleru Lake which is uh, which used to be a, a hub for migratory birds and um, over the years because of all the waste water that has been going out of the fish farms and into the Kuleru Lake the, we see all the bio indicators within the lake uh, on, uh, on on the high level of pollution, the migratory birds have stopped coming, and the overall biodiversity of that entire region is negatively impacted. And at the same time, we, when we when we spoke to the local community, um, they complain about declining groundwater table because all the water is being taken out to uh, put, to put in these fish ponds, uh, and there are drinking water challenges now in this in this district, which is um, which has the success story of uh, you know really uh, the the revolution of, of fish farming uh, in, in in this area. So the, the you know we found so many interlinking problems, and we found as as you know as has been well documented. Uh, but really to be able to bring those people on board, you know, bring in those people who are concerned about the biodiversity, and be able to use data as language and frameworks like One Health um, to be able to find those places where we can agree and we can find pathways to action. So we took all the research that we had done, we took all the data that we uh, gathered, and we started the process of reaching out to those people who were also concerned about these issues with different um, interests in mind. But our goal is really to find that intersection where we can agree and there can be a uh, change for the better. So we organized a uh, One Health uh, uh, stakeholder engagement program. This attracted about 106 participants. This was focused on the poultry sector in Andhra Pradesh, uh, attracted 106 participants, uh, very high government representation, uh, farmer representation, uh, lots of uh, sectoral players from the industry, uh, students, NGOs, scientists, public health experts, environmentalists. So anybody connected to the poultry uh, sector in Andhra Pradesh, we made sure that there was representation there. And using the data and the research that we had, and we had been doing individual dialogues with many of these stakeholders uh, prior to the event, um, we at the event we steered the discussion and we uh, helped bring focus on the One Health framework. And we were able to uh, derive consensus on not using antibiotics as growth promoters. And this is really pivotal. This is this is very pivotal because. Uh, 
you know these sort of um these these sort of things are typically pushed by by animal people by by organizations and individuals who are uh you know promoting animal interests but we were able to get multiple sectoral stakeholders to also get behind this so now you know we've already um sent the formal representation to the government we are working uh with uh, local ngos to make sure that's implemented at a farmer level um but for multiple sectoral stakeholders who have different interests for that for them to come together behind um initiatives and activities and uh, policy and uh, re reforms both in policy and practice uh, that would benefit uh, bird welfare is is of course what we've been uh, most interested in but also all these other allied issues is what has been our greatest success in being able to build these alliances in being able to get them behind us with with these different uh, actions that we undertake uh and th this has really only been possible because we we use science research data as our primary tool of engagement you know and that's something that we found to be extremely effective uh when we are trying to do things at scale and when we are trying to engage with people uh who aren't necessarily speaking the same language or have the same priorities um as us uh what we also do is we develop a research and policy ecosystem so we regularly partner with academic scientists uh in different institutions in different universities uh so that not only does our research methodology improve as a result of their inputs uh but we are also able to harness collective intellect for uh, being able to think about some of these problems for being able to bring in the expertise and the richer thinking uh, that that we need uh, to solve these sort of complex intersectional issues uh besides working on uh, farmer and producer issues we also identified that consumers have a major role to play in shifting food systems so we took the research and insights and all the data that we had put together and uh she and and put that in the form of a diet change campaign called food and you 2.0 and this is all about uh, again collaboratively working with ngo partners uh, in different parts of india and we try and ensure that the ngo partners that we uh, bring on board are not traditional animal organizations so in fact uh, almost all the partners that we are currently working with um they are either environmental groups or youth groups and they had existing networks of education so they were already maybe undertaking environmental education with a school or a college or um or or, or some other uh, institution and uh, we we were able to leverage those uh, and and uh, be able to bring the uh, the message the campaign for uh, plant based climate friendly diets uh in those networks and that's really how we are able to amplify uh, we are able to grow the movement uh, we are able to uh, get the message to places where it's 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 not it's not gotten there yet and it's um, it significantly helps uh, you know not not just being in the tent you know we are working with people outside the animal movement we are we are able to expand it we are able to broaden it we are able to take this this the diet change work to audiences that we would not otherwise have access to and we found this hugely um successful whether it be in hospitals or schools or um you know other sort of institutions where our target group of youth uh, are so looking back on our journey what's very evident is that the uh, the data and the research is uh, is is very critical uh, at multiple stages and it's not like we can do it once and then not revisit it uh, it's an ongoing process it's it's something that we have to uh, do regularly it helps hugely you know initially to help us even understand the problem in being able to uh, help us understand the problem and also be able to use it as a compass to really identify with more precision what is it that really needs change or what is it that we can change and what are the potential pathways to change and 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 that uh, has to be rooted in data and and not 
uh, opinion or or um, you know uh, hearsay. Um, secondly, it's also hugely valuable in establishing a common language. Uh, so whether it is intersectional collaboration that one wants to build or whether it's even just working with the government, uh, we've got to have data and evidence. Without data and evidence uh, on on the issues that we're working on, uh, it becomes uh, it becomes really difficult uh, to ensure that the discussion, the conversation does not just, um, you know, become a battle of opinions. Um, so it's really important to stay rooted in, in data as a common language. Um, science is, 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 uh, is, is a good common language that we can all agree upon. And, um, and, and finally, uh, we're, when we're working uh, with different stakeholders, when we're working with, uh, for example, even with consumers, making sure that our data is credible, making sure that we have all the everything, we can back everything that we're saying really significantly helps improve the quality of our work and also the credibility of, of our work. So it's it's really important. And at Samayu, uh, we found it absolutely essential in, in the work that we do, which is why we uh, want to invest more in our research uh, capabilities, uh, because it really does uh, form the bedrock of uh, all, all the work with, that, that we do. Um, and um, thank you so much for uh, your for for your time today. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you. I would love to have more conversations about the work that we do. I'd love to hear about the work that you do. And uh, please feel free to uh, reach out to me on um, e either my email or or on Twitter. Looking forward. Thank you. Thank you, Varda. And beyond reaching out later to Varda uh, via Twitter, that kind of thing, um, we also have some time now for questions as well as a breakout room that will happen right after this. So I just wanna pick out a question that I noticed in the chat from Jiaying Chung, which I think is a great question. Um, for work like this, when it's so complex, there's so many different stakeholders involved, uh, Jia Ying asked, how do you get the different stakeholders interested to participate? For instance, government, policymakers, that kind of thing. What we find to be really valuable is to uh, use the existing framework. That's oh, Varda, it's a little bit hard to hear you. I don't know if you're able to. Is that better? Oh, yes, actually. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, so, uh, so, so what I was saying was that what we found really useful in that context is to use uh, existing frameworks. So we use the One Health framework, but there are many intersectional frameworks that can be used. Um, and uh, we find it uh, valuable because, um, you know, we are able to, you know, we don't, we don't agree on the bigger picture, you know, I mean, for example, environmentalists and public health experts or the government uh, does not, uh, you know, does not look at, is not interested in animal interests or advancing animal interests within uh, the animal agricultural space. Um, but using common frameworks and limiting the conversation to those common frameworks. So even when we were talking about antibiotics, uh, not using antibiotics as growth promoters, uh, there were lots of things that do come up that, uh, you know, you know, one group may not agree with another group and so on and so forth. But what, what we really try and ensure is to um, stick to that, you know, be very focused about, you know, the, the, the common framework that we're using. Uh, to be able to talk to whoever's on the other side, it could be a, it could be several different stakeholders, or it could be just the one. It could be just, you know, it could just be a policymaker, uh, or it could be multiple interests in the room that are um, uh, represented. Uh, th that's one thing that we found really useful, and of course, like having, um, having the data. Do you know, I mean, we're also now starting to do um, uh, similar such intersectional work with other uh, animal issues in India, also. Uh, based on the success we've had, uh, you know, with, with the work that we've done so far, uh, and, and having that sort of initial data, uh, which clearly shows uh, the linkages, which clearly shows the linkages, you know, not just from an intersectional perspective, but whatever is the, the interest of the other side, you know, so if it's a government or a policymaker, uh, you know, their interest would, you know, at least in India, it's typically livelihoods, uh, farmer interests, uh, you know, employment, uh, growing um, income. Uh, so really, how can we link those things up and having specific data and also showing the negative impact of animal agriculture uh, to the goals uh, in meeting the goals that they have for farmers and income and livelihoods and so on and so forth, you know, so having that 
uh, you know, which is credible data, you know, and, and, and I think the credibility of the data is really important. Um, we've had to um, really uh, increase. I mean, we, we've we seen uh, uh, investigations done in the past in India that did not hold water uh, when we went to policymakers because they just weren't robust enough. They weren't rigorous enough, you know. So I think rigorous research is uh, really critical, especially if we want uh, policy change. Absolutely. A great answer. Thank you so much. Um, we do unfortunately just have those five minutes for the questions, but for anyone, I know there were a few more in the chat and some others may have them in mind. Anyone who wants to continue chatting with Varda, please join me in the break room with her. Uh, the next session about regional advocacy for farmed animals is starting right away, but you have the option to click on the pop-up window that invites you to the breakout room instead if you want to continue this conversation and ask questions.